Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. Indiana was one of the more surprising Power 5 teams in the country last year as Tom Allen's squad went 6-2. and two. But their only losses coming by 7 on the road to Ohio State and by 6 to Ole Miss in the Outback Bowl without their star quarterback and Michael Penix. The Hoosiers come in at number 9 in our early Gridiron Expert Top 25. And the scary thing is, guys, this Indiana team has a chance to be even better than the one we saw last year. They have a chance to be even better than the team we saw last year if they can handle this very difficult schedule. When you look at the team, before we dive into the schedule, they do lose their, uh, their defensive coordinator in Kane Womack, who went to take the head coaching job at South Alabama. That's a huge loss because Indiana's defense was one of the best in the country last year. So a shame to see him go. It'll be interesting to see if the defense can maintain their success they had in 2020 with a new leader as their D.C. Michael Penix should be back fully healthy at quarterback. It'll be interesting to see how well he plays in week one, though, at Iowa. But this team as a whole, though, returns 19 starters from last year, guys. 19 starters from last year's team. This team has the, the depth, the experience, and the talent to not only contend for the Big Ten Championship, yes, I think they can contend with Ohio State in the Big Ten East, but if things go their way, they are a dark horse college football playoff contender, no doubt about it. So we're going to take a look at their schedule real quick, guys, and the first thing that I really want to point out before we look at their key stretch, before we kind of touch on each individual game, is look at the road slate. Look at how difficult the road slate is for Indiana at Iowa, at Penn State, at Michigan, and then a potential trap game at Purdue. So the schedule did Indiana no favors when it came to the road games. Uh, yes, they have a couple big home games. Obviously, Ohio State on October 23rd is the big one, getting to host the Buckeyes, a team that only lost to 42-35 to last year. That's huge. A game that very well could determine the Big Ten East. But the road slate uh, is just very, very difficult and mildly concerning if you're a Hoosier fan. But let's go ahead and look at it. First off, they start at Iowa. At Kinnick Stadium in a season opener, that's going to be a very, very tough game. We've already talked about Iowa. They are in our top 15. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. We touched on their schedule and what their outlook could be in 2021. But we know they're going to have a very strong secondary. Spencer Petrus is back at quarterback. It's going to be interesting to see how quickly he builds chemistry with his pass catchers. That's the one thing that could save Indiana here is that maybe Iowa's offense isn't up to par. So if their offense is up to par, the Hoosiers' defense is still at an elite level, maybe they do have what it takes to go on the road and steal a win at Kinnick Stadium. And to do that in week one would be insanely impressive. And again, would show that Indiana is still legit. Even if they lose the game, doesn't mean they're not legit. But this would be huge in helping maintain their Big Ten East title hopes. And that's what they want this year. They believe they can do that. I believe they can do that. So Iowa in week one, not going to be easy. No, no cupcake team to ease into the year with. Idaho in week two, that's your cupcake team. That's the way to, to either continue the success you had after Iowa, rest up a little bit, or bounce back if they were to fall to the Hawkeyes. Cincinnati on September 18th, that's going to be a tough game as well. We already talked about Cincinnati. They are a top 10 team for us. And when you look at Cincinnati again, this is a bigger game for them than it is for Indiana. Indiana winning this game at home would be huge because it would probably mean getting a win over a top 10 opponent. So either way, the winner of this game is going to get a resume-boosting win, no doubt about it. But it's bigger for Cincinnati because winning it on the road is obviously more impressive, and Cincinnati is looking to rack up those quality wins and a chance to make the college football playoff. We know how difficult it is for a group of five teams to get to that point. So Cincinnati on September 18th, not going to be an easy game at all. Not going to be an easy game at all. A potential top 10 showdown. Again, if you had asked me that two, three years ago, do you think... You know, can you believe that Indiana-Cincinnati would be a top-10 game? No, of course not. But there is that potential in the third week of the season. One of the more underrated games in week three, maybe of the year. At Western Kentucky, shouldn't be a huge deal for the Hoosiers. And so when you look at these first four games, guys, uh, there's a very good chance that Indiana starts 3-1, and one, maybe 4-0. and oh. It's manageable. Iowa and Cincinnati, obviously the toughest of the two games. One on the road, one at home. Uh, but they're manageable, where Indiana could win those games rack up two quality top 25 wins in those first four weeks and be sitting well in the top 10, maybe in the top six or seven before they start what I believe is their key stretch. And their key stretch, really for me, is the entire month of October. 
I mean, just make it simple for you. From October 2nd to October 30th, that's the key stretch. And really, it's these two games here against Penn State and Ohio State. Last year against Penn State, we know, to me, that's what really kicked off Indiana's season in terms of how great it was. They went for two at the end there, 136-35 to in overtime. Whether you believe Michael Penix was in or not, it doesn't matter now. It was still an unbelievable game, an unbelievable finish. Well, now Penn State, for them last year, they were the eighth-ranked team in the country when they fell to Indiana. They're going to bounce back this year. And you can bet your money that James Franklin is going to have his team fired up at home in Happy Valley with a potential sold-out Happy Valley to redeem that loss last year that derailed Penn State's season and kick-started Indiana's. Those two teams went in completely opposite directions after that Week 1 showdown last year. So at Penn State, a very, very difficult game. A Penn State team that is going to bounce back. A Penn State team that is going to bounce back, looks poised to bounce back from a very disappointing, what was it, 4-5 and five season in 2020? They had the talent to do that. They're not going to struggle again this year. So that's where Indiana really needs to watch out. They get their bye week. They play Michigan State. They beat the Spartans 24 to nothing last year on the road. And I like that they're getting them at home and getting a bye week prior to that because Michigan State, I think, is going to be a little bit better than they were last year. They were a team that was not only hit hard by COVID, but they were hit hard before COVID. When Mel Tucker had to come in at the last second, well after National Signing Day, they didn't have a normal offseason, they had a brand new head coach, everything was just so wrong for Michigan State, and they still got two quality wins over Michigan and Northwestern. The Spartans should be a little bit better now in 2021, but enough to come on the road and beat Indiana? Not quite sure. Ohio State's the big one. Ohio State's the big game for the Hoosiers. If you remember last year, Indiana was down, what, 21 points, 28 points, something like that, and kept chipping away, chipped away, chipped away, chipped away against an Ohio State team that, for right now, I believe was better in 2020 than they're going to be in 2021. Yes, the Buckeyes have one of the best wide receiver cores, if not the best wide receiver core in the nation with Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave. But they have questions at quarterback. Who's going to start? How well they play? Can they fill the shoes of Justin Fields? Will the defense be up to par? And when you look at this Ohio State matchup again, guys, it's in Bloomington. It will be sold out if they're allowed to have full capacity. And Indiana last year only lost to Ohio State in Columbus 42-35. to Only lost by seven. Had a chance to tie it at the end. After being down by so much, this Tom Allen squad that we saw time and time again last year did not quit, did not, keep, did not quit trying, continued to put forth maximum effort, and almost came back on the road to beat Ohio State. Well, now Ohio State comes to Bloomington. Indiana very well could be undefeated at this point. Very well could be a one-loss team at this point. And if they lose to, say, Iowa or Penn State, they have one conference loss. They beat Ohio State. Ohio State has a conference loss, and Indiana's going to own that tiebreaker. This game against Ohio State very well could determine who wins the Big Ten East. And the winner of this game is going to control their own destiny in getting to the Big Ten championship game. Unless, of course, Indiana were to lose to both Iowa or Penn State, whoever it is. Two losses, worse than one. But... More than likely, the winner of this game controls their own destiny in getting to the Big Ten title game and getting to Indianapolis. And that, to me, is a very feasible, tangible goal for Tom Allen's squad in 2021. This game on October 23rd is going to be one of the biggest of the year if, of course, Indiana and Ohio State both live up to their expectations. Obviously, if you're Indiana, you would prefer that bye week to be on the 16th and not the 9th, but they take easy care of Michigan State, rest their starters, get ready for one of the biggest games possibly in recent Indiana football history. Then they go on the road to Maryland. They beat them 27-11 to last year. That was the game where Michael Penix got injured. Got injured against the Terrapins. So obviously that will be an emotional game for him, assuming he can stay fully healthy over the course of this season. Maryland's a team that's getting there under Mike Loxley. They showed signs of improvement last year. But they're not fully there yet in the East. They're still getting there. And give them a little more time. Maybe next year will be the year they finally break through. But Maryland certainly in contention for a bowl game this year. They are right there to me on the border of getting to the postseason. And so in Indiana, either high off a win over Ohio State or low, beat up, down after a loss against Ohio State, has to be careful not to slip up on the road against the Terrapins. They round out the month of November, guys. Really, to me, I'm not too concerned about the month of November, but it's the two road games that worry me more than the home games against Rutgers and Minnesota. At Michigan, we don't know what to expect from Michigan this year. What's going to come up the Wolverines? New quarterback and Alan Bowman. Is Jim Harbaugh finally going to turn things around up there? So many questions up in Ann Arbor. High expectations every year, and they fail to meet them. 
But the big house, certainly not a place that you want to play. Certainly not a place and a team you can overlook. Even if Michigan is at their lowest of lows, the big house is very, very difficult to play in. They cannot afford to overlook the Wolverines, a team that I do think is going to be just about average this year, better than they were last year. Rutgers at home. Indiana beat them 37-21 to last year on the road. Minnesota drawing them out of the West. Not going to be an easy game at all because P.J. Flex squad will bounce back this year. And then at Purdue, obviously a major trap game there. We mentioned that at the beginning of this video. The road slate, Iowa, Penn State, Michigan, Purdue, very, very difficult. We know how these rivalry games work. You could be the number one team in the country playing your rival that has not won a single game, and that team that has not won a single game can upset you. Because anything can happen in rivalry week. We throw records out the window in rivalry week. And Purdue is not going to be a slouch in 2021. I'm not saying they're elite in the West, but they are going to play relatively good football in 2021. No doubt about it. So Indiana certainly can't afford to overlook the Boilermakers, especially if at this point they are the front runner in the East. They're at the top of the East standings. They are in playoff contention. Who knows what will be at this point. But Purdue's that tricky trap game for me that if I were Indiana, I'd be slightly worried about come season's end. The FPI has them at 8-4. and four. Obviously, if you're an Indiana fan, that would be disappointing. But at the same time, you have to be thrilled with that because 8-4 and four gets you to a semi-decent bowl game. Hopefully, a bowl game you can finally win because Indiana's been getting there under Tom Allen. But that bowl game and that bowl win continues to elude them. Hopefully, that streak can end in 2021. 8-4 would be solid. And with the slate they had, the difficult schedule they had, it wouldn't be that disappointing. And it's not that far-fetched. But I know deep down with the talent they have after what we saw last year, the Hoosier faithful have a little bit higher expectations. And those expectations, guys, can be met in 2021. No doubt about it. But I guarantee you, you will know whether or not Indiana is a legit Big Ten title contender, they're a legit college football playoff contender. You'll know that by the end of this Penn State game. Because by that point, they would have played Iowa, Cincinnati, and Penn State. If they're undefeated at that point or a one-loss team at that point, watch out for the Hoosiers. They're going to be a force to, force to be reckoned with in 2021. So guys, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and make sure to hit that little bell to get notifications, guys. Eight more teams left in our schedule previews, but you never know which team is coming up. So make sure to hit that notification button. Make sure to get notifications for all of our videos, and you're not going to want to miss predictions when they start shortly after this. All the more reason to hit that button. Also, all the more reason to check out everything down in our description below for exclusive content throughout this entire summer and throughout the entire college football season. So make sure to go check that out. Always there for you, the diehard college football fan. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.